Hi, it's Kathy here, and I'm going to do some painting for you. So welcome to my little movie here. Um, the first, This is a painting that I'm going to be working on today. And the first thing that I like to do is, instead of going into just coloring in the, um, the animals here, I'm going to color inside the in-between and get that out of the way first, because that's really what unifies the whole thing, and it's going to set my whole mood so um, you also don't want to um, you also don't want to upset any of the paint that you're going to get inside the animal by doing the outside later. So it's much less tricky to get the to get the uh, the background colors in before I go into the focal points here. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is get my palette ready. I'm using one of my um, already messy palettes here, but I'm mixing my paint. So what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a little sick. <clears throat> I'm going to do a color gradation. Instead of just doing one flat color, I like to use a lot of different colors. I always mix different colors. I never use just a, just a color out of the tube because there's nothing that's going to make your painting look more flat and boring than than that you really want to mix them and make your own colors and then it brings so much more depth and life to to you know your painting and to to the paint and to everything so uh believe me it looks like you used it out of a tube if you did and besides you know colors are a great world to explore so um there's so many different you know variations you can get on different colors okay i'll stop talking and we can paint um so I mixed my colors. I like to use a fair amount of water. And what I do is I have this little dropper bottle that I used to use for ink, but now I use it for, um, now I use it to wet my watercolor. And it makes it really easy to do and kind of precise so I don't overwater my paint. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some water. And then you'll see how I put the paint in afterwards. Probably shouldn't have started in the center, but this water's a little bit colored from the paint that I was just mixing, but that's okay. Because as you'll see, it really is, it really just... You just kind of have to go with the flow. Sometimes your water's going to be clear. It's all going to have color in the end. So I think those little, you know, little things that happen are part of the process. I'll just do a small section for you. So what I'm going to do, um, the edges, I'm going to do just clear. So I can concentrate on that section and not have, you know, have a minimal amount of, um, of like a line, a, um, oh, what do they call it? Like a, like a, not a bloom, but a sort of a, you know, the line where the paint ends, where it gathers at the edge. Of course, there's there's ways you can get rid of that anyway, but which I probably will do because I'm getting that all around here. I tend to get that with greens and blues. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of my paint, and then I'm just going to... So I'm just kind of guiding it into... Um, you know, different areas. I like to leave a white halo around subjects because it allows you to have some freedom um, for later because you're going to be doing a lot of painting. On this painting, there's going to be a lot of water and there's going to be a lot of, uh, oh, there's going to be a lot of action happening here and you don't want to uh, bleed too much into your your pen your pen work you don't want to you know overwork the paper 
So you can always remedy it later. Some people like to do like a wash of um, a very light color over their whole painting. But because I work in watercolor, um, you know, the white you get is really the white of the paper. And so you have to be mindful of that at all times. Um, there have been times where I've had to go in and um, use white paint, which I really don't like to do. Um, typically, it doesn't really look good, but you know, you can make it work if you have to. So I'm just going to continue here. Um, sometimes you can use like a dry brush type of thing, or a, a wet on dry or dry on wet. Or I mean, um, sometimes you can use a a wet on dry technique like I'm using right now, and get um, a richer color, and then you can pick it up later. And as you can see, what I'm doing right now, I like to fade into, you know, the subject so that when I paint the subject, I go into darker because this is where the shadow would be down here. And this is, you know, where the light is hitting higher. So you want the shadows to be a little darker or the shadowy areas, I should say. I'm also kind of going back and forth with the blue and the green. I like that for a palette for this one. For the background and then the dogs will actually be you know multicolored but this will make them nice and unified and give a nice color um, a little template for us to go by for the decorative aspects of of the piece I really like working with a limited palette um, Sometimes I feel like my best stuff is done <laughs> with just a few colors because you can do so much with just a few colors. Do blue over here. And um, you'll see when we go into the dogs, I really like to uh, use paper towel a lot, <laughs> or just paper. To um, I like to lay down paint and pick it up with that. It gives a really nice texture, depending on the paper that you use. There's different ways you can pick it up, pick up the paint. Um, you can use like paper with weird patterns in it and use a brayer, which is, uh, let me see if I can grab it. This is a brayer they use them in printmaking. It's like a rubber, rubber roller. Those are cool to use. You can use all kinds of weird little gadgets. Anyway, see how I'm fading into the little chihuahua's neck. Actually, I'm gonna water this down a little bit because it's looking a little too dark. Um, in these areas, I'm also gonna put the actual color of the dog. Um, and then in the end, it's gonna look like it's going to look like a glaze of blue and green. It's not going to be probably as pronounced as it is right now. Because otherwise it would look like the dog's heads are coming out of the clouds or something. And they're not. 